Hello everyone, this is a lesson on A-level mathematics on proofs. I'm a math tutor and if you like the lesson, please don't forget to subscribe. The first exercise we're going to cover today is prove the following statement for all integers n. n to the power of 3 minus n is always even. To prove this statement, we need to use any algebraic method and see that this expression can be divided by 2. So we start with the expression n to the power of 3 minus n and we choose to factorize and see. So it is n bracket n square minus 1. Still now it is not clear whether it's even number or whether it can be divided by 2. But we notice here that the bracket is the difference of two squares. And this gives you an identity n minus 1 times n plus 1. So we simplify this bracket as n bracket n minus 1 times n plus 1. And I can write this multiplication of three expressions as n minus 1 times the n times the n plus 1. By looking at this expression, we see that we have a multiplication of three consecutive numbers. So there are only two cases is for consecutive numbers, one can be even times by an odd, the following is odd, times by even. Clearly this is an even number because it can be divided by 2. If you multiply any even number by any number, give you an even number. So this is even. The other case is the first one to be odd, the second to be even, and the third to be odd again. And it's also clear that this is also an even number because it contains an even number here, and it's a multiple of two. So these are all the possible cases, and therefore the statement above is true for all integers n. The type of proof we are going to see today is proof by contradiction. Proof that there is no largest integer. And we are going to prove this statement by using the proof by contradiction. The proof by contradiction, we start with the opposite scenario. So we make the assumption that there is a largest integer. So we start by the assumption that there is a largest integer n. And we are going to work to find a contradiction to this statement. Now we have made this assumption, but always the number the numbers on the number line increase by one. So if n is the largest one, then the n plus one is equal to another integer k, and the k is higher than n. And this gives you a contradiction of the original statement. And therefore, we conclude that there is no largest integer. So we conclude here that there is no largest integer. because we found a contradiction.
The third question is this one. Prove that the product of any two distinct prime numbers has exactly four factors. So we make the assumption that we have two prime numbers, P and Q. This is a prime. So the only factors we have for the P is 1 and P. Q is another prime. And the only two factors that we have for any prime number is 1 and the prime number itself. So it has two factors for Q. So we need to prove that the product, the multiplication of two prime numbers has four factors. So if I go and multiply the P times the Q, this gives me P Q. And the factors of P Q are the following. One, the factor P, the factor Q, and the factor P times Q. So these are always, the, the, in total we have four factors. And this proves the original statement. So the product of two prime numbers has exactly four factors for any prime number, because a prime number has only two factors. This is the number six on proofs. A student makes the following statement. If x to the power of three is even, then x is even. She attempts to prove the claim as follows. Let x equal two times the k, then x cubed is bracket two k to the power of three, eight times k to the power of three. This gives you two bracket four k to the power of three, which must be even. Therefore, the claim is true. Explain why the student proof is not valid. The original statement is if x to the power of 3 is even, then the x is even. And by looking at the proof, the student makes the assumption that the x is even, and then the x to the power of 3 must be even, which is not the same. That's why it is not valid. He started with the x to be even and not the x to the power of 3 to be even. That is why it is not valid. What we try to prove here that if the x cubed is even, then the x is even. And let's see the part b, which is the right way to prove the statement. If x cubed is even, then x is even. We can prove this statement by contradiction, proof by contradiction. The proof by contradiction to prove the statement if x to the power of 3 is even, then x is even. By using this proof, we start with the opposite, that the x to the power of 3 is even, but the x must be odd. So the statement, the assumption we make here, is that x to the power of 3 is even, for x value that is odd. And this is the opposite case. And let's work with this scenario, this case. The expression is x to the power of 3. And if the x is odd, I can write the x as 2k plus 1. So the x to the power of 3 give you, give you a 2k plus 1 to the power of 3. We can expand the bracket as 2k plus 1 
times 2k plus 1 square. Multiplying the two brackets. And simplifying We take the two out of the bracket and then factorize and the expression we have for the x cubed is 2 bracket 4k to the power of 3 plus 6k square plus 3k bracket plus 1. The bracket is an integer and it we times by it to give you an even number plus one this give you an odd number. So we came into a contra contradiction and therefore the opposite is true. So the this is a contradiction here. We came into a contradiction, so the opposite is true, and therefore the original statement is true. So this is a contradiction. And therefore, the original statement is true. Now, this is exercise 7. Riyad claims that if x and y are both irrational, the x over y is also irrational. Disprove Riyad's claim with a counter sample. Irrational numbers are the numbers that cannot be expressed as fractions which normally are square root of any prime number for example root 2 this is an example of an irrational number another example is the square root of 3 and so on it cannot be expressed as fractions To give an a counter example to see that it is wrong so if the x and y are both irrational we take the case that the x is root 2 and the y are both irrational so if I divide both consider the case that both are root 2 then this give you 1 and 1 is not irrational and therefore we have disproved the above claim. And the number B, Riyad goes on to claim that any non-zero rational number multiplied by any irrational number is irrational. Prove this claim by contradiction. So one number is a rational number, let's say the k is a rational number, so it can be written as a fraction, and the other number is irrational. Let's say the z is irrational. 
it cannot be expressed as a fraction. And so if the k is a over b, b, we can use the proof by contradiction. So the contradiction, we make the assumption first that it can be expressed as rational numbers. The multiplication of the k times the z give you a rational f number. So, so we assume that it is true, that it, the multiplication of the k and the z give you a rational number. The product of k and z, the product k times z is rational. So we are going to work on this statement and then find a contradiction to see that it's not possible. So if the k is a fraction, so we can write k times the z is a over b times the z. Because it is irrational, the product is rational, we can write them as another fraction c over d. From this equation, a over b times z equals c over d, we can, using the method of cross multiplication and making z the subject, we found that the z is c times the b over d times the a. And this says, this says that the z is a, fra a rational number. This is a rational number, which is impossible because we consider originally that the z is irrational. So we came into a contradiction. And if this is wrong, the opposite is true. So the multiplication of a rational number and a, an irrational number is irrational. The opposite is true. And this comes to the end of the lesson. If you like the lesson, please click the like button and subscribe to see more lessons like this 